how are you doing? I am always glad to see you, glad that you're tuning in to Children's Ministry. And on today, we're going to get into the Word of God. So get your Bibles, get whatever you have your Bible on, and let's go before the Lord and on a word that He has for us on today. And I pray, Heavenly Father, we come this day, God, always giving you glory and honor for all that you are God, all that you are to us, Father, you are our Father, and we praise you. We take this time just to say thank you, to say hallelujah to your name. And as we study in your word on today, may the Holy Spirit lead and guide us through your truth, bring us revelational knowledge that we, Father, apply it to our lives, that we will be all who you have called us to be. In your son Jesus' name we pray, amen. All right, faith kids. Get your Bibles turned into the book of Acts chapter 9. And on today, we're going to be talking about uh, the Apostle Paul. And we're going to go through uh, part of his life and how he started his journey and what was he going through. So if you're in Acts chapter 9, but I'm going to start with your memory verse on this week. And I pray that you're doing your memory verse each and every week that we're studying and meditating upon the word of God and allowing the Holy Spirit to speak to you through each passage that we meditate upon. And so your memory verse for this week will be Psalms 146 stanza number eight. And it tells us the Lord opens the eyes of the blind. The Lord lifts up those who are weighed down. The Lord loves the godly or righteous. And that is our memory verse for this week that we've come to meditate upon. So as we're looking in Acts chapter 9, we're going to restart with verse number 1. And so we're talking about Paul, but at this time he was not Paul. He was Saul. So he was Saul and he was from Tarsus and that's how we know him as Saul of Tarsus. So let's read in verse number one. It says, meanwhile, Saul was uttering threats with every breath and was eager to kill the Lord's followers. So he went to the high priest. In this verse, it says Saul was eager to kill the followers of Jesus Christ. When you are eager, you are passionate about something. Think about something in, that you're eager about, fake kids, something that you just like, I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. I got to do it. I'm going to do it. And you know, no matter what's going on, no matter what's happening, you're going to do that. This is how he was. He was like, oh yeah, we're going to get Jesus, those followers of Jesus. Cause he was thinking that they were wrong and Jesus was not who he is and, and all of that. So that's why he was killing the believers, the Christians, and he was passionate about doing so. What are we passionate about? Are we as Paul or as Saul passionate about Jesus, passionate about the work of the Lord? Let's continue to read. And it says that he went to the high priest. He requested letters to address the synagogues in Damascus, asking for their cooperation to the rest of any followers of the way he found there. He wanted to bring them both men and women back to Jerusalem in chains. All right. So he says, going to the high priest and he's on his way to Damascus. And so he's asking the high priest that, can you give me some letters to take to the other churches, to the other priests, telling them to cooperate with me, giving me authorization that when I come into Damascus, that I can take all those followers of Jesus and bring them back to Jerusalem in chains, bound up. That's what he wanted to do. Bring them back in chains. So let's continue to read in verse number three. And as he was approaching Damascus on the mission, a light from heaven suddenly shone down around him. He fell to the ground and heard a voice saying to him, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? So let's talk right there, fake kids. So he's on his way to Damascus because he's, you know, already got the letters, got authorization that when he goes in, he's going to get the followers and bring them back to Jerusalem in chains. So a, a light 
shines around him. And let's look at that for a moment because we'll find out later that Paul or Saul was not by himself. It says though, but the light only was shining around him. When God has something for you to do, fake kids, it doesn't matter who you with, doesn't matter who's around, he knows how to focus in just on you, to get you focused, to get me focused, just us. So that's what's happening to Saul. The light shined around him. And it says that Paul went down, kneeling down to the ground. I can just imagine, just as when the sun is shining, have you went outside and the sun's in your eyes. We know what we do when we see the sun in eyes. We kind of like cover ourselves. Or when uh, we're driving in the cars and how the sun shines through, we tend to flip down our sun visors because to keep the sun out of our eyes. So this bright light from heaven was shining all around Saul. And so he bent down and was trying to cover himself because that's how light, how bright the light was shining around him. And then he heard a voice. It was Jesus's voice telling him, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? So Saul is like, what? So let's read on in verse five. Who are you, Lord? Saul Ask. So now he asked, who are you, Lord? How can he ask, who are you, when he already said who it was? Lord. That's how we know that when we hear the voice of God, we hear and we know that his, it's his voice. Because Saul says, who are you, Lord? He could have said, who is this, James, Peter, anyone? He says, who are you, Lord? And then let's read on. And G I am Jesus, the voice replied, the one you are persecuting. So Jesus answered and told him, I'm, this is Jesus who you are persecuting. Now get up and go into the city and you will be told what you must do. So he, Jesus said, so get up and go to the, to the city and I'll tell you what you're going to be doing. So the man that was with Saul so I told you, he wasn't alone. He was had people with him. So the men that was with Saul stood speechless for they heard the sound of someone's voice, but saw no one. Saul picked himself up off the ground, but when he opened his eyes, he was blind. So his companions, the people that was with him, led him by the hand to Damascus. So Saul down on the ground because he was hiding from the light. He was shining on him. But when he got up and opened up his eyes, he couldn't see. He couldn't. He was blind. So the people with him took him by the hand and they led him down to Damascus. And he remained there blind for three days. And he did not eat or or drink. It says he doesn't eat and drink. And I know if it was me and this is happening and I don't know what's going on and I'm praying and seeking God and I probably was not eating, uh, drinking or sleeping. I'm probably just like, Lord, what it is that's going on that you're doing here with me? So it says, but it only says he didn't eat or drink. And now let's keep, continue to read on. He remained there for three days and didn't eat. So now there was a believer in Damascus named Ananias. And the Lord spoke to him in a vision calling Ananias. And he said, yes, Lord. So he was a believer and he knew the voice of the Lord. And because he said right away, yes, Lord. When he, God said, Jesus said, Ananias, he said, yes, Lord. He replied, the Lord said, go over to Straight Street to the house of Judas. When you get there, ask for a man from Tasha's name Saul, and he is praying to me right now. I have shown him a vision, a man named, that a man named Ananias is coming in and laying hands on him so he can see again. But the Lord, but Lord, so Ananias says, but Lord, exclaimed Ananias, I've heard many people talk about the terrible things that man has done to the believers in Jerusalem. And he is authorized by the leading priest to arrest everyone who calls upon his name. So Ananias already know. He says, wait a minute, Lord, I know this guy who you talking about. Saul, 
of Tarsus. I've heard the stories. He's going around killing believers, killing people. He even got permission from the priest to arrest the believers and the followers in your nest that's worshiping you, that are serving you. He said, they're going to hear he's arresting them. So I can imagine that Anas was like, Lord, you want me to go down to him, to talk to him, to see him, this man who may kill me when I get there. So let's continue on faith kids. And he says, but the Lord said unto him, go for Saul is my chosen instrument to take my message to the Gentiles and to Kings, as well as the people of Israel. So God, Jesus is saying, okay, I know, I know what it said that Saul was killing people. I know, but he, I have chosen him. Just like the word tells us fake kids, you are chosen by the Lord. So it doesn't matter what people think of you. It doesn't matter what you do. It doesn't matter when God has chosen you, when he has a purpose and a plan for you. He will make your way straight. And I believe that's the reason why that street was named Straight Street, because Saul was there and he's making Saul's way straight. So Ananias, being obedient, he says, uh, the God Jesus go on to say, and I will show him how much he must suffer for my name's sake. So Ananias went and found Saul. He didn't hesitate. I know his thoughts was like, okay, this is Saul on his way there. I know he's been killing people, but, but Ananias was obedient because he had followed God. He had been doing his ways and I think about David when he faced Goliath because he had said, okay, God was with me when I killed the bear. He was with me when I killed the lion. So I know he'll be with me with this uncircumcised Philistine, right? So he had confidence, just like Ananias. He was like, okay, God told me to go. I'm going no matter what, because we know faith kids, God is always with us. And if he's sending us, you can rest assured he's with you. He has made the way for you to go. So as we continue to read, so Ananias went and found Saul and he laid hands on him and said, Brother Saul, the Lord Jesus who appeared to you on the road has sent me so that you might regain your sight and be filled with the Holy Spirit. Instantly, something like scales fell off of Saul's eyes and then he got up and was baptized. So Ananias laid hands on Saul. And if you know anything about fish, fish have scales, those scales on them. So that was like covering Saul's eyes. It just fell off of him. And he got up and then he became baptized. And afterwards he ate some food and regained his strength. And Saul stayed with the believers in Damascus for a few days. So when God is calling you for, to do what he wants you to do, that he's leading you, faith kids, no matter how old, how young you are, God has a plan and a purpose and he has it for you to do. And when we're obedient to his will and to his plan, we can rest assured that he's with us. The word says he never leaves us. He never forsaken us. So if he's going there, and it, it also tells us he is more with us than that, that that is not. So when we're doing what God has called us to do, when we're doing his purpose, he's leading us and guiding us. He helps us. So just like he was helping Saul right then and there, when we're messing up, when we're off course, we're not doing what he has called us to do. We're not living a godly, a righteous life. He, he still helps us. His love for us is so great. He still helps us. He provides a way of escape. He helps us on the way. He doesn't leave us. So it's not like, oh, okay, they're not listening to me. They're not doing what I ask you to do. No, he's still with us. He is still wanting us to do what he's called us to do. And not only that, he, he wants to use us in a mighty way. He wants to work in and through us when we are obedient to what he says. So faith kids, I know you're excited about this word on today as I am. We're going to continue this story on next week and find out what Saul has to do. So now Saul, who was killing Christians, he has to go about because now he's changed. 
And so we're going to find out just about what that means. And I will see you on next week, Faith Kids. Remember your memory verse for this week, Psalms 146, stanza number eight. And have a blessed week. See you then. Bye.